Welcome tech enthusiasts to exciting journey in the world of networking. Today we're diving into the realm of custom firmware as we explore the installation process of OpenRT on the TP-Link TLWR902 AC4 router. It's quite mouthful, isn't it? Let's call it V4 for the rest of the video. What stands out most is its remarkably compact size and versatile port configuration, including a single Ethernet port capable of serving both LAN and WAN functions. Now, let's talk power. Despite its micro USB input, you can power it up using a regular power bank, which is incredibly handy when you're on the move. Additionally, it offers the convenience of a full-sized female USB port for emergency charging of mobile devices. Using OpenRT, you can also do USB tether, but that is for another video. To download our custom firmware, let's start by searching with the name, model, and version. And here we come across our first obstacle, OpenWRT for version 4, isn't supported just yet. But don't worry, we've got a workaround. We'll simply make use of the firmware for version 3 instead. Later, we will tweak it to make it work for our version 4. After downloading our v3 firmware, we need to rename it to tp underscore recovery dot bin file. Don't power up the router. Just connect its LAN WAN port to your computer's RJ45. Next, press Win plus R key to open our run command and type ncpa.cpl. Then, enter. Right-click on Ethernet and select TCP IPv4. Now click on Properties and manually set IP address to 192.168.0.66. Next, press Tab key for subnet or manually enter as shown. Now let's copy our bin file and paste in any TFTP server application. Here, I am using TFTP64 by PHJunin. Links to all needed files can be availed from the description below. Next, let's start our server and select the Ethernet interface we just manually configured our IP and subnet into. Now power on the router and simultaneously press the reset button using a SIM removal tool like shown here. After a few seconds of holding the reset button, this prompt will come suggesting successful file transfer. Stop holding the reset key. Router will now flash and start itself. This may take some time, don't worry. Now, go back to network connections and undo the changes to auto-obtain IP. Once router starts, it will automatically provide an IP to our computer. We can see the name TP-Link. Next, we open any browser and type in 192.168.1.1 and hit enter. We will be welcomed by a new interface, Lucy. Open WRT's GUI. No password needed. Just log in. New problem, no 5 GHz band showing, no issue. We will fix it. Just follow the steps. Next order of business, we connect to an existing 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network. Hit scan and follow along. Enter your Wi-Fi password and hit submit. A new prompt will open here. Scroll down and select Network. Add LAN to the group by clicking on it. No further settings needed. Click Save. Select Save Apply.
we have now been connected to the internet. Next, we will go to System, then Software, and here we will click on Update Lists. A small list will be downloaded. Hereafter, we will install two new KMOD files, namely KMOD MT7615E. KMOD MT7663 Firmware AP. Now we go back to Network, Wireless Interface, and we can see another radio being displayed. We could simply restart just like shown here, but it's always a good thing to just reboot. So finally we see both our 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz radios here and the system is stable. I am using it as it is for the past one week, but I had to redo all for this video. Also I am planning to install ad blocker and USB tethering in here. If you are interested do let me know. Any suggestions or future topics should I cover do share in the comments. I am all new to video software it took me a couple of days and a whole lot of headache to make this. Thank you to everyone who has made it this far watching the video and I hope your day goes well. Thank you.